Right. Um, I, I mean, if we move away from the numbers in terms of the pay, there is still another area where there's still um, inequalities being looked at, and that is the limited uh, political representation. We have continued to see, especially during the photo op, which uh, took place just the other day at, at the African Union Summit, which you are there. And, and every time you look at that picture of all the African presidents, what does it make you feel? Because some people say you'd have to zoom to be able to see any woman on that particular picture. And most of the times you might not probably see uh, uh, you know, a, a, a number that would make you smile. What, what does this make you feel and what do you think should be done to ensure that there's more uh, women in, in positions of leadership like the presidential level, you know, to be able to be able to spur this kind of change that you're trying to push as first ladies? The problem is in the pipeline. It's incredibly hard for women to become parliamentarians, to become governors, to become local authority leaders. And we can't do this without quotas. Um, Namibia implemented quotas and went from a 27% parliamentary representation of women to 44%. That was a significant jump. Um, recently at Namibia's uh, uh, party elections, we our next presidential candidate is going to be a woman. The likelihood that Namibia will produce a female president for 2025 is high. Actually, we, we're quite certain of it. We, we are a democratic country, but the ruling party remains quite strong. So Namibia will at least contribute a female president in 2025. But your question remains correct. In 2023, when we look at a list of African uh, presidents and we only see one female president, from uh, Tanzania, there's a, a female president from Ethiopia. It does make us pause. We had Ellen Johnson Salif, who was the first democratically elected female president on the continent. And she's obviously served her term and she's doing spectacular work through her foundation. But, but the question is, what is stopping us from female representation in politics at the highest level. And I think it's got a lot to do with how our politics are organized. It's got a lot to do with how our societies think about women. And it's also got a lot to do about how expensive it is to become a politician on our continent. And generally where the money is, is where the men are. So when a woman is running, it's not so easy for her to mobilize financial resources. But it's also mindset changes. It's also the need for quotas. It's also the need to make sure that we keep women in politics, that we get them into politics, that they're willing to stay as well. We've seen globally, we've seen the, the Irish prime minister, we, sorry, it was the, the Scottish prime minister, the New Zealand prime minister, both saying, I've had enough, I'm out. So it's also difficult for women to be willing to remain in politics just because of its very nature. So there's structural reform that has to happen right. um, in our political and social organizations. Mm -hmm.